Hi everyone, Rory Neary from Data Spinners and Those Dynamics Guys. Today I am going to be looking at Colour Fade, which sounds like a, a really dull subject. I really like this particular one. It's basically how you move from one colour to a faded version of the colour. Um, and so we are going to jump straight in. We are going to go onto an app that I prepared earlier. Here's a normal colour, here's a faded version of that colour. So what you can see is that the normal colour is uh, normal colour is just this straight. Let me just look on the fill property. Look on there, fill, and it's one of these RGBA things. Um, and the faded version is the same colour, and and it's kind of got 0.5. Now there's lots of things that we can do here. Now so if it was all the way up to a one then it would be completely faded and if it was zero nothing's happening and if it's uh, minus 0 0.5 then oops that's 0 0.05 minus 0 0.05 then it's approaching black um, and then obviously if it's a minus one then you've gone all the way to black so I'm going to go 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 Five, and they just show you a couple of things. So, um, so we are going to look at this thing here. We're going to, if I was to put something like blue in there, you'd end up with a faded version of blue. Um, similarly, we can actually, we could actually associate it with this, um, with the fill property here. So we could actually say, uh, I'm not using any of my naming conventions here. Uh, so strike me down. Um, so I'm going to call this one uh, rename btn faded, okay? Um, I'm going to call this one rename btn original. That'll do, okay? Because that'll make our formula a little bit easier to read. So can do what we can do is we can go color fade of btn original dot fill and it then looks at that and then does a faded version of that. And then what you can do with that is you could then on the fill property here, you could make it something like, let's say make it green. And uh, away it goes, it fades it out. So that's quite neat. Uh, and then the way in which I used in a project that I did recently was I actually managed to get the, um, I managed to connect up to a timer uh, in such a way that the button would uh, the uh, yes it was a button in this case actually uh, it would fade in and out so the if you look at the formula here it's a little bit long-winded but anyway we'll go with it go on to the film so it's a particular color and then it uses the cosine function um, and divides it by four and then adds point uh, two to it now just look at the timer function here so what we've got is a timer it's just basically going to oscillate and as it's going to do the cosine function of that which should return us i think something between naught and one um and and then i add uh point two to it because i don't quite want to fade it out completely i think it's something along those lines but look the bottom line is when you actually start using it you end up with a button that actually fades in and out and the idea with that is on this um on this particular app that i was doing here i wanted the users to um let's say we've got on this house builder thing here i wanted the button to appear but only after they'd they'd pressed a certain number of um uh, cells so like when it got to 15 the the button would appear and it would then flash so that they would actually know it was there so that's how I used it I really like uh, color fade I think it's quite a neat way of um, making it clear that something is um, important and it could be relevant at that time it could be that they've done their submission form and that it's all ready to go um, all the validation checks have been done and it'll start flashing for you so um, obviously from an accessibility point of view um, it's not going to work if you know, you've got people that are blind and, and so on um, but uh, it will at least help with a lot of users Anyway, thanks everyone and see you again soon. Bye.